in this video, we'll move into chapter 10. Chapter 10 is formally titled Analytic Geometry. That's a very fancy word. We're really just talking about using known ge uh, geometric shapes and then looking at algebraic ways to describe those curves. So we've already seen a lot of this with respect to the ideas with here's an equation of a graph, drawing, uh, being able to draw the graph itself and going back and forth. We're going to see a lot more of that. But now the three, uh, the three graphs, the three shapes that we will focus on are formally referred to as the conic sections. So that's why I included that. Now, to be quite honest, there is a lot that we could say about each and every one of these, but we're really gonna keep this as basically just a very nice introduction. And like I said a moment ago, very similar to how we dealt with circles. There are a lot of facts that go with circles, but we really just stuck with this basic principle of being able to sketch the graph from the equation and vice versa, being able to form the equation if we are given the sketch. So that's what we're gonna do here. And these are formally the three different conic sections. And you'll notice we're gonna focus a lot on 10.1 and 10.2. I'll mention a couple of quick things about 10.3, but really the homework and everything that we'll focus on is 10.1 and 10.2. Why are they called the conic sections? Well, that's why I have this little picture right here. What this is supposed to be, it's a three-dimensional drawing here, right? I've got a cone or a funnel that opens up, an ice cream cone, a pouring funnel, whatever you wanna think of. And then I've got another one directly below it where they're basically like meeting up right here. The idea of the conic sections is what graphs, what curves, what shapes are formed if I introduce, if I um, intersect these cones with a plane, with a sheet of paper. So how can I do that? Well, I'm gonna use this little envelope here as my sheet of paper. And depending on which way I angle that sheet of paper, we're going to get very, very different shapes. So let's start off talking about the idea of an ellipse. If I started off with my cones and took a sheet of paper so that I basically went through one cone, either I went through the top cone or I went through the bottom cone, but any one of those will work. If if I make this perfect, if I make this basically perfectly perpendicular to the overall shape, I would end up with a perfect circle. But any little angle here, trying to draw that three-dimensionally here, I'd end up with that shape going around the cone. So in general, an ellipse is an ovalish shape. A circle is a perfect example of an ellipse but not all ellipses are circles. Ellipses have more of this ovalish shape. And we'll talk about this ovalish shape has a little bit more of a left right and is skinnier and it's up down, or it opens more and it's up down and it's skinnier and it's left right. But these will basically be our two different pictures that we'll have when we're thinking about an ellipse. Now, I'm actually gonna jump down to the parabola for a moment. Can you see a way that I could intersect my envelope with this and end up with a parabola? We've seen parabolas before. So we've seen parabolas that basically open up, down, or up, up or down. And that would be a simple situation of letting my envelope go through the top of the top cone or going through the bottom in the bottom cone. If I do something like this, I'm still getting this intersection point, but now I'm going out the top, and there would be an upward facing parabola. And if I did something like that down here, I would get my downward facing parabola. Now, the one thing that this is ignoring, I can turn my cones and move them more left, right, and that would also give us parabolas that could open left or right in addition to up or down. So I will very, very quickly mention that. But again, just to point out the possibility is there, but we're really gonna, again, stick with the ellipses and the hyperbolas. The last one, our hyperbola, well now, 
It's a little similar to the parabola, but instead of just angling my envelope, so I only hit the top cone and go out the top, or I only hit the bottom cone and I go out the bottom, what if I angle it in a way that I miss this middle area, but I hit the top and go through the top and hit the bottom and go out the bottom? If I do that, I'm basically getting a double parabola in a sense, and that's formally our hyperbola. But here, kind of what I was seeing here, a lot of our hyperbolas open both up and down, but we also have the possibility that they open both left and right. So those are our situations. Those are our different pictures, our different curves that we are going to look at here. So now let's get a little deeper. Let's already start getting into the formal equations. Ellipses are very much like circles, and they have a very similar equation to a circle. I'm going to remind you first, just thinking about centered at the origin. If I had a circle centered at the origin, our equation was x squared plus y squared equals r squared. That's it. Well, now again, an ellipse, a circle is a special case of an ellipse. So our ellipse formula must be very similar. So when it comes to an ellipse, this is where if you follow the book, the A and the B letters that the book use, I really get frustrated by how they keep flipping their purpose. So my notes are just going to be so slightly different than the book, but I'll explain exactly how all this works in just a second. Our standard equation for an ellipse will be, if it's centered at the origin, will be x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. So what's the similarity here? Well, first we have to discuss what a and b are doing. Notice, just like the circle, r is squared here, but we only talk about plane r as the length of the radius. And the radius is how far to the left, to the right, up, down, any angle. That's how far we go from our center. And that's basically the, the main key to all circles. But when we have an ellipse, and when I have this type of notation, I'm going to use A as how far we open left and right from our center. And I will use B as how far we open up and down from our center. What I'm trying to do here is to connect A to X. That X is our variable that goes in the left-right direction. So that A will be the distance we need to go in our left-right direction. And similar, Y is how far we go up-down in our standard XY axis. So B will measure the length, how far we need to go up and how far we need to go down from our center. If you notice, a circle, these values are the same. How far do you go left-right? Well, that's R. How far do you go up down? Well, that's r, and that's where if you multiply this whole equation by r squared, you go right back to here. That's the similarity. Now, I don't want to get too hung up on this, but again, there is a lot of other information that if we have our ellipses, like we said, we could have ones that open more in the left right than the up down. We could have other ones that open more in the up-down direction than the left-right. But here would be my center, and the way I'm doing it, both of these are distance A, and both of these are distance B. In this one, there would be my center, both of these are distance A, both of these are distance B. I think that is a much, much friendlier way to remember and make these connections. And that's gonna be how we do this, everybody. This is how we're gonna jump back and forth. If we've got the picture, we're gonna need to identify the center and figure out the values for A and B so we could plug into our equation. And vice versa, this is the standard form of the equation. So if it is in the standard form, we could immediately just start graphing. If it's not in the standard form, this is where we're going to need some reminders on completing the square. So now my full, full formula. This again was still centered 
at the origin, so our full standard formula, our standard equation for an ellipse centered at HK. We'll use that same HK notation that we used for the center of a circle. We'll do the same thing for a center of an ellipse. And that'll be X minus H quantity squared all over A squared plus quantity Y minus K squared all divided by B squared equals one. That's really what we're gonna get used to working with. So that's gonna be my main key being able to get equations into this form so that I could get the HK information to plot the center, use the A and B values to figure out the left down, uh, the left right and the up down distances, do my best getting a nice curvature as I connect those dots. Not connecting them in a diamond way, but connecting them in a smooth circular-ish way. Now, what are we ignoring here, okay? Again, that's what we are going to do but just to point out, there's more. There is a whole formal definition of an ellipse that has a lot based on distance, the same way our original definition of a circle, a bunch of points which are all equidistant from the center. Well, here, there's a lot more extra information. There's this idea of having two focus points. The plural of focus we call foci, and that we have this idea of a major and a minor axis. That if we're opening this way, that this is the major axis and this is the minor axis. If we're in this way, this is the major axis, this is the minor axis. So that's where if you see that terminology and our book, I forget which one, but I think it always likes to use A as the distance for the major axis and B as the distance for the minor axis. So they're always flip-flopping what is A and what is B depending on are we opening wider this way or wider this way. So those are some of the little things I'm trying to move us past. The idea of the foci, there's two of them and they're always on the major axis. So maybe in this one, my foci, this was my center, but these are my foci and they are distance C from the origin and distance C on the major axis. And believe it or not, there's Pythagorean theorem in here. B squared plus C squared equals A squared in this example. In this one, my foci would be up here and down here, and this would be distance C. And now we'd have A squared plus C squared equals B squared. It's all about just what's bigger. And that's, that's a little bit why the book tries to stick with A always goes with major and B always goes with minor. So that way it always works that A squared is B squared plus C squared. But like I said, we're not really using the focus, so I'm not worried about that part. So you're aware that, that, that there is such a thing. There are a lot of applications for ellipses. If you've ever studied anything about astronomy, the planets move around the sun in elliptical, not circular, but in elliptical orbits, and the sun occupies one of these foci. Same thing, the moon goes around the earth in an elliptical orbit, and the earth occupies one of these uh, foci points. And we have things like perigee and apogee, points when the moon is closest to the earth and when the moon is furthest from the earth. Same thing for the sun, perihelion, aphelion, when the Earth is furthest one from the Sun, when the Earth is closest. So again, that's just one example using astronomy. There's a lot more. There's this whole definition that this is based on a common distance from both, that this point, that this distance plus this distance is the same, that for this point is the same as this distance plus this distance. So again, this can get very messy, but one more time, this is gonna be our entire focus. Okay, similar. I'm gonna get through all the information first and then we'll finish with some problems here. So that, again, we get good practice. When you do your homework, 10.1 separates all the ellipse problems, 10.2 separates all the hyperbola, but it'll be good practice for us to just see how we can just deal with all of this together. Okay, so now, page two. 
Now let's start talking about the hyperbola and more of those parallels of math. Now, that's not obvious, but that these came from these two different ideas of conic sections, and that last little bit, the sum of these distances is the same for all points. Well, the hyperbola will have a similar setup, but they'll look at the, dis the difference between those two distances being a constant value. And that's how we'll get these types of pictures. This will be a setup where the foci are here and here. This would be a setup where the foci are here and here. But we still get very, very similar pictures. I'm going to jump right into the formula and then show a standard drawing to go with it. And I'm going to skip past some of the earlier stuff we did with the ellipse and just cut right to the point. If I want the standard equation... for a hyperbola, and we'll still stick with the whole HK as our center. Well, now we get two possibilities. If we are opening left-right the way this one does, well, that will be X minus H squared over A squared minus quantity Y minus K squared over B squared equals 1. Just very quickly, what's the difference between these two formulas? It's really just in the ellipse, we get the plus. In the hyperbola, we get the minus. And now, if you weren't sure, well, what happens if we're in the up-down situation here? Well, notice if you add squared terms, it doesn't matter. x squared plus y squared, y squared plus x squared. Addition, the order doesn't matter, so that's the same thing. So that's partially why we only had one equation here. But there's a big difference between having x squared minus y squared and y squared minus x squared. And that's going to lead to these two situations. If it's up down, we'll start with the y minus k squared over b squared and then we'll have the x minus h squared over a squared equals 1. But they still always have that fact, that idea of equals 1. And now getting back, oh, and of course, h and k. h will always connect to the x. k will always connect to the y to get my xy pair for my center. A and B are still going to have that sense of distance. And A is still going to connect to the left-right distance, and B is going to connect to the up-down. Again, this is again where the book has that same little goof, not goof, I don't want to say it's a goof, but where they always use A in one way, I always like to use A to connect to X, and that B always connects to Y. Okay, so how do we draw this now? Well, we have to have some HK, so let me just randomly pick a spot and I'll call that HK. Maybe that's like four comma one, but just a random spot. And I'll still almost do the same thing we were mentioning with the ellipse. I'll still go A as my left right distance and I'll use B as my up down distance. But now here's the big difference. Either one of these is a plus now, these would be your four extreme points, and you do your best to, again, it's not always going to be a circle. It might be, but to get that roundish oval shape, that egg-like shape for the ellipse. But for a hyperbola, now how we finish this. Now, I kind of use the combined endpoints here, that if I go A this way and up this way, this is a corner of my box. This, this, and this. These four give me a box and now I will draw the diagonals through that box and this is how we will finally finish. If you know you're in the up-down situation, you will start your left hyperbola piece right here, right on this edge of the box, and you'll open it inside. These diagonals are actually asymptotes. So don't just open a U-shape inside of here. Open it wide to get to those extreme sides. 
and then similar over here. Start on this exact point on this edge of the box and then opening inside of these asymptotes. But if I'm in the up-down situation, well now this will be a point for my top hyperbola and this will open inside of that same set of asymptotes and then this will be my bottom point and this will open up in this side. So the left-right situation, either way, left-right or up-down, we'd all make the same box, but if it's left-right, we fill in these two pieces, and if it's up-down, we'd fill in these two. Okay, everybody, we're just about ready to start some problems, but the very, very last thing I just wanna mention quickly is parabolas. Just to realize, the reason we're kind of skipping past this is because we've basically already done it. If you go back, I believe it was section 2.1 or 2.2, but as soon as we started chapter two, we had a whole section focused on the quadratics and we talked a lot about them, but we always stuck with functions. So we always had the basic y equals x squared and that opened up, and then if there was a negative, y equals negative x squared, it would open down. Can you guess what the formula would be if we had a left-right opening parabola? Think about the parallels we're seeing. It would just be the reverse. It would be x equals y squared. That would give me a parabola that opens to the right, and if it was x equals negative y squared, well, then it would open over here on the left side. I mean, I could do some more and talk about the whole, you know, center and vertex. And I mean, we don't really talk about center here, but we talk about a vertex, the extra details. You know, there's still an idea of a foci here and that there's an extra value C like we saw with ellipses. I'm not even going to get into that. For parabolas, there's this whole idea of a directrix and a focus. But again, a lot of extra information, but we're really, really just sticking to the real basic pre-calc aspects, equations and graphs, and being able to go back and forth. So now let's start off. Let's start off for what most people, they consider the easier way. Let's give equations for the following sketches for the following graphs. I, I mean, just one last quick thing just to point out for all the conic sections. This is where all the squares come out. If only one of the variables are squared, it's a parabola. And if it's the x that's squared, it's the up down. If it's the y that's squared, it's the left right. Well, if both x and y are being squared, well, are they attached by addition? Well, then you're in ellipse. Are they attached by subtraction? Well, then you have a hyperbola. So, you know, other people may spend a little more time on this section and get a little extra familiarity with these equations. But again, this will be enough. So give equations for the following graphs. Let's start off with number one. Let's look at And I hope you realize, even as I'm drawing this, it's good practice for when we get to the drawing to try and see how you don't make this into a diamond. Don't make hard lines to these points. I'm making smooth lines. But I hope you even saw as I was doing this, the way I drew this was really the key to figuring out the equation. First things first, what are we looking at? Well, we're looking at an ellipse. So I'm going to this standard formula. So I need HK. I need H, the X coordinate of the center, K, the Y coordinate. Well, the center here is at four comma one. So therefore H is four and K is one. I was a little nice here that both H and K are positive, but you know, we'll, we'll get some more practice with some more in just a few moments. So, that's my first part. Realize X and Y are still variables here. So the only other thing that I'm missing are A and B. So A, how far from the center do we go left, right? B, how far from the center do we go up, down? Well, A, 
how far does it take for me to get from here to here or from here to here? Now, we could go through the whole distance formula, but take advantage that you're only going left, right. Here to here, one, two, three, four. If I did it the other way, one, two, three, four. If I'm just going left, right, or up, down, I could use my scale, and that tells me that A is four. How about B? Well, from here, how far do I go up? One, two. Or how far do I go down? One, two. B equals two. So my equation will be x minus h, so x minus 4, quantity squared, all over a squared. It's perfectly fine to write 4 squared, but I'm going to do the work and get that 16, plus quantity y minus k squared, all over b squared, equals 1. Okay, let's do that again. Like I said, let's get some good practice here. Don't want to rush through these, but this is why I said similar to circles, everybody. As long as we know the standard equation, all we have to do is look at the picture and know what it is we're looking for, and we could just basically plug in and be done. And just like the circles, everybody, no good reason to do anything further past this. Don't clear the denominator. Don't start foiling, squaring this out. That is a very, very good final solution. So let's stick with these directions. This is now page three, but now we're moving into problem number two. And same directions, everybody. We're still going to give equations, but now but now I'm going to have Now I've got a little bit of a skinnier, tighter parabola, but again, that doesn't matter. I'm sorry, not parabola, elli ellipse here. This is another ellipse. So we'll take the same approach as the previous one. And realize, I mean, I went very methodically, find H, find K, find A, find B. It's just getting all four of those values. The order you do that doesn't matter, but I'm still gonna take that same approach. Start with my center. Well, that's two comma zero. How far am I going to the left and to the right? I might say you should check this just in case we don't goof. We don't accidentally do a miscount. We can't go three units to the left and four to the right. It should match. So one, two, three to the right. One, two, three to the left. That gives me my A is three. And how far up down am I going? Well, I'm just going up one. I'm just going down one. So B would give me one. So my formula... I, if I am completely literal here and fill everything in, I would get x minus 2 squared over 9 plus y minus 0 squared over 1 equals 1. And of course, that is certainly correct. But just to realize the little things, the book does, I mean, I just said a moment ago, you don't have to think about foiling anything out here. I mean, even if you left that as 3 squared, that's fine. But just little things y minus zero is y. So the book would probably not write that as y minus zero squared. They'll just write y squared. And even writing y squared over one, that's unnecessary. So would not be surprised at all if you saw this answer written in this form. But again, same thing, no big deal at all. Okay, okay. so let's do two more here. Next, number three. here. So now I've got number three drawn. 
okay, well, big thing. Now we're in a hyperbola, not an ellipse situation. So now we're thinking about one of these two equations. Well, now, which one? We've got two possibilities. Any ellipse, we were going to this one, and that was that. But now, which one do we really want here? Well, this picture is opening up down, so it's this one. But outside, I still basically, what's H, what's K, what's A, what's B? There's my HK. I went three units to the left and up two. So that would be negative three comma two is your HK pair. A is how far left, right, just to get to the edge of the box. So A would be one. Just one unit here, one unit here, that's that. B, how far up down to get to the top and bottom of the box. Well, I gotta go up to, I gotta go down to. So B equals two. So I put that together. Again, this one I have to start with the Y. I have to go the Y squared minus the X squared. Specifically, this will be Y minus two quantity squared over B squared minus X minus H. It's perfectly fine to write minus a minus, but that's where a lot of us will make that X plus three squared all over one equals one. And just like before, over one squared is fine or just dividing by one, that is certainly a good answer. Okay, last one like this, everybody. Number four. Okay, everyone, last one. Here we have number four. And this last one, we have one more hyperbola. Now it's a left-right one. So now I'll go x squared minus y squared. But I still need my hk, which I've got right here. That's negative one comma negative four. A, how far left-right? One, two, three, four to the right. One, two, three, four to the left. A equals four. B, how far up, down? One, two up, one, two down. B equals two. And we put that all together. Again, starting with X. X plus one quantity squared over A squared. I'm sorry, minus, I almost said plus, minus. That was the whole point of the hyperbola. I had to figure out which comes first then the minus, then the second. So now I'll get y plus four quantity squared over four equals one. I'll start a second video where we do the opposite. I will give you the equations and we will have to sketch the graph.